It's rush hour in Cardenas, an industrial town on the north coast of Cuba. There are few cars or buses on the streets. Instead, most people here travel by bicycle or on horse-drawn carriages. Cardenas prides itself on using alternative forms of transport, but for many Cubans, bicycles are a grim reminder of the tough times everyone faced following the collapse of the Soviet Union. I rode a bicycle for a year and a half. I will never ride a bicycle anymore. For sociologist Marta Nunez, these were the hardest days of her life. And all of a sudden, all of us had nothing, nothing, nothing. No energy, no electricity, no water, no, no, no soap, no nothing. Shortly after the revolution, Fidel Castro turned to the Soviet Union following the trade embargo imposed by the United States. The Soviets ended up buying all the sugar Cuba could produce at inflated prices and selling it oil and everything else it needed at subsidized rates. Then suddenly it all dried up. Castro announced they'd entered a special period in a time of peace, comparing the ensuing deprivations to a wartime siege. Delia Lopez is co-author of a recently published book on the special period. The impact was brutal. Since we did not have oil, we could not operate our factories, do agriculture, and the homes had no power. Cuba ended up importing more than a million bicycles from China because it had run out of fuel for cars. In the countryside, tractors were replaced by oxen, and without fertilizers or fuel for irrigation, there were severe food shortages. Everyone went hungry and lost weight. But for Delia Lopez, it was the blackouts which hurt the most. The blackouts were like a sword, striking at the heart of Cubans during the special period, because in the heart of the summer months here, it's almost impossible to live without an electric fan. Thousands fled the island on makeshift boats in a bid to find a better life in the United States. The U.S. reacted by tightening the trade embargo, hoping to push Cuba to the brink of collapse and bring about regime change. But the system survived and eventually a new benefactor stepped in, Venezuela's Hugo Chavez, who used his oil and petrodollars to come to Cuba's aid. These days, Venezuela is in crisis and can no longer afford such generous assistance, while the U.S., under President Donald Trump, is once again trying to pressure Cuba to change. Cuba was never as dependent on Venezuela as it was on the Soviet Union, and today it has commercial ties with a whole range of countries, including China and the European Union. The economy is struggling, and for many, times remain tough. But the experience of the special period points to the resilience of the Cuban people. Michael Voss, CGTN, Cardenas, Cuba.